afternoon, Grand Rapids, and welcome back to my living room for some Saturday story time. I have a couple of books to share with you today. Uh, before we get started on books, let me just give you a few reminders. Uh, so it's really important right now that all of us are staying home if we can and that we are staying safe. So I've had lots of people reach out to me and ask me to um, better explain what do we mean by social distancing. So if you are out and about playing, what that means for you is that you want to keep a physical distance in between you and your friends. So six feet is the rule of thumb. And so we're asking people to just keep your distance, your physical distance. I know that for kids sometimes that word social distancing can be really confusing. Um, but we want you to keep a good amount of distance, so six feet. If you remember your math classes, uh, you can remember what six feet is. We want to make sure you keep your distance from one another. And the reason we do that is to make sure that we are not passing on germs to other people. So our goal right now is to make sure that everybody stays healthy and that they don't get sick. And we all need to help do that. So we all need to follow those rules. The other thing that I've had people talk to me about this week is that um, as the weather gets nicer, people want to get outside, which is a good thing. It's fresh air is good. Uh, and our parks are still available, but there's a few things at the parks that we do not want you to play on. So for the next at least month, maybe a little bit longer, we don't want you to play on any of the playgrounds. So the playground equipment is not clean right now. We can't keep it clean enough for everybody. So we have all the playgrounds closed down. We also have our bathrooms closed down and our picnic shelters. Uh, you can still go to the park and you can walk on the trails or ride your bikes on the trails. You can um, run around in the green space, uh, but we want to make sure that, again, you keep your distance away from other people. All right, so let's all practice social distancing together so we can keep each other safe. Okay, with that, let's read a book together. So this was a book that was recommended by one of you who watched one of my story times a couple weeks ago, and it is called have you filled up a bucket today? Well, let's see what this is about and what they're talking about with buckets. When I was little, I had a bucket. And I would often use it in the sand or at the beach. Hopefully all of you have a bucket, especially going into summer. Let's see. Let's start here. All day long, everyone in the world, the whole wide world, walks around carrying invisible buckets. You can't see it, but it is there. See all the buckets? But they are invisible. Let's find out why. You have a bucket, and every member of your family has a bucket. Oh, look at even your dog has a bucket. So that means my little Cooper has a bucket. Your grandparents and friends and neighbors all have buckets. Everyone carries an invisible bucket. I wonder what goes in that bucket. Your bucket has one purpose only. Its purpose is to hold your good thoughts and good feelings about yourself. You feel happy and good when your bucket is full. And when you feel sad and lonely, it's because your bucket is empty. See the little sad face? Other people feel the same way too. They are happy when their buckets are full and they are sad when their buckets are empty. It's great to have a full bucket and this is how it works. Other people can fill your bucket, and you can fill theirs. You can fill your own bucket, too. So, how do you fill a bucket? I wonder, do you have ideas on how you can fill buckets? Let's see what some ideas are. Well, you fill a bucket when you show love to someone, when you say something or do something kind, or even when you give someone a smile. That's being a bucket filler. Doesn't cost much to give a smile to someone, does it? To brighten their day. A bucket filler is a loving, caring person who says and does nice things to make other people feel special. 
When you treat others with kindness and respect, you fill their bucket. Yeah. But you can also dip into a bucket and take out some good feelings. You dip into a bucket when you make fun of someone, when you say or do mean things, or even when you ignore somebody. That is called bucket dipping. Bullying is bucket dipping. When you hurt others, you dip into their bucket. You will dip into your own bucket too. So that means when you are mean to somebody, it not only takes good feelings out of their bucket, but it dips into your own bucket too. Many people who, have, who dip into other people's buckets have an empty bucket. They may think they can fill their own bucket by dipping into somebody else's, but that will never work. You never fill your own bucket when you dip into somebody else's bucket. But guess what? When you fill someone else's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. You feel good when you help others feel good. Can you think of a time when you felt good because you helped somebody else? Yeah, it works both ways, doesn't it? All day long, we are either filling up or dipping into each other's buckets by what we say and what we do. Try to fill a bucket and see what happens. You love your mom and dad. Why not tell them that you love them? You can even tell them why. Your caring words will fill their buckets with joy. Watch for smiles to light up their faces. You will like, you will feel like smiling too. A smile is a good clue that you have filled a bucket. If you practice, you can become a great bucket filler. Just remember that everyone carries an invisible bucket and think of what you can say or do to fill it up. Here are some ideas for you. You could smile and say hi to the bus driver. So when you get back to school, make sure you are nice to the bus driver because they have a bucket too. You can invite a new kid at school to play with you. Because you know what? When you're a new kid at school, sometimes it's scary, isn't it? Especially if you don't have any friends. You could write a thank you note to your teacher. So even right now, even though we're staying home, you could still write a note to your teacher and let them know how much you appreciate them. You could tell your grandpa that you like spending time with him. There are many ways to fill buckets. Bucket filling is fun and it is easy to do. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. It doesn't cost money and it doesn't take much time. And remember, when you fill someone else's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. When you are a bucket filler, you make your home and your school and your neighborhood better places for everyone. Bucket filling makes everyone feel good. So why not decide to be a bucket filler today? and be a bucket filler every day. Just start each day by saying to yourself, I am gonna do something to fill someone's bucket today. And at the end of each day, ask yourself, did I fill a bucket today? Yes, you did. That's the life of a bucket filler. And that can be you. The end. So yesterday I was taking a walk in my neighborhood and I saw lots of little things that kids in my neighborhood was do, are doing, I should say, to fill up buckets. So I saw messages on our sidewalk with chalk. I saw stones that were painted with sweet messages for other people. Um, so sometimes you can leave nice messages for strangers too and that can fill up the bucket. So I need to think about ways to fill up buckets. Sometimes when we are stuck at home for a long time, 
Uh, sometimes we can get frustrated, and sometimes we can say things that aren't nice, and we can dip into other people's buckets. So let's make sure that we're practicing all of those good skills and uh, kindness that I know all of you have to fill up buckets. All right, we have one more book for you today. This is one of my favorite books. I've had this book for about 20 years. I used to read it to kids when I used to work with kids as a social worker. And I love books about the animals. And this one is called Snail Started It. All right. And it kind of goes along with the book that we just read. I think you'll see why. All right. I love the pictures on this book, too. So one day, Snail met a pig. My, you are. Fat, said the snail. Oh, it's not very nice, is it? I am surprised your legs don't give way under all of that weight. I like being big and round, said Pig, admiring her reflection in the puddle. See Pig in the puddle? It wasn't very nice a snail, was it? I am just the right shape for rolling in the mud, and besides, I enjoy my food. I am happy just the way I am. And with that, Pig danced away on her dainty little feet. See Pig dancing away? Do you like to dance? It's kind of a fun thing to do sometimes. But when Pig thought about Snail's remarks, she was upset. And so when she met Rabbit, who was hiding among the trees, see Rabbit right there? She said to Rabbit, what a timid creature you are. Watch out or you'll worry your life away. <gasps> Nonsense, muttered Rabbit. I have to be careful in case the fox comes after me. I'm not going to let him catch me. And with that, Rabbit disappeared into a hole. See Rabbit right there? But Rabbit started thinking about what Pig had said, and he was so upset by it later that he met a dog snoozing in the sunshine. Kind of reminds me of Cooper. Cooper likes to do that too. Although there's no sun today, it's a little cloudy. And what did Rabbit do? He scolded him. What a lazy dog you are. All you ever do is sleep. Quite right, said the dog. And I have a good life. Don't I? So look at that little sleepy dog. If you have a dog, you probably see your dog sleeping a lot too. They seem to like doing that. Let's see what else dog likes. I have wonderful dreams, dog went on, of cowardly cats and juicy bones and pretty poodles. And with that, he closed his eyes and went back to sleep. <laughs> look at him smiling. Look at him at the poodles. When Dog woke up, he remembered what Rabbit had said, and it upset him so much that he almost walked right into a spider's web. Ugh, said Dog, looking down his nose at the spider. What an ugly creature you are with all of those spindly legs. It can be useful to be ugly, said the spider. People don't like the look of me, so they kind of leave me alone. And with that, Spider scurried to the top of her web. Kind of true. I don't like spiders either. But the more she thought about what the dog said and the unkind remark, the more annoyed Spider became. When she saw a goose happily grazing in the meadow, she said, What a silly goose you are! How can you stay so calm when tomorrow you may be put in the cooking pot? <gasps> tomorrow, mused the goose. Maybe, maybe not. Why worry about something that I cannot avoid? Poor goose. I won't let such a gloomy thought spoil such a lovely day, Goose declared, and she jumped into the cool blue lake. Oh, but guess what happened next? Just like when people say mean things, sometimes it 
bothers you a little bit later on. Spider's words had spoiled the day for Goose, and she was still upset when she met Snail. You are the slowest creature I have ever met, she said. You were at the bottom of that same molehill when I saw you this morning. And now I've reached the top, said Snail proudly. On my way up, I've enjoyed the view and I have had a very interesting chat with the mole. It has actually been a very good day. So Snail, had somebody say mean things to him, just like he said to the pig. But it was not a good night for Snail, who sat in his, sat in his shell and sulked. How dare she call me slow, he said. Suddenly, he remembered what he had said to the pig. Oh, no, he thought. I must go and apologize. Early the next morning, Snail set off to find Pig in her mud patch. I am very, very sorry, panted Snail, quite out of breath. Sorry for what, asked Pig. Well, for calling you fat, said the Snail. I like you just the way you are. A thin pig wouldn't even look right after all. Why, thank you, said Pig. Oh, no, then she remembered what she had said to the rabbit. You must excuse me, Snail, I have something important to do. And off she trotted to find Rabbit. Before the day was out, Pig had apologized to Rabbit, and Rabbit apologized to Dog, and Dog had apologized to Spider, and Spider to Goose, and Goose to Snail. And that night, with everything forgiven, they all settled down to, see, to sleep contentedly, happy once more, just to be themselves. The end. So just like the first book, what happened? We had snail and started dipping out of people's buckets, didn't we? And then they filled them back up at the end by apologizing and saying nice things. So those are our books for today. I will have two more books for you next week, but I'm still getting suggestions in, so I'll make next week's books a surprise for you. So in closing, I want to remind you about a few other things you can do while you are staying home and staying safe. So we have a lot of fun things going on at organizations throughout the community. So even this morning, I got on to Facebook and I was watching the butterflies at Frederick Mark Gardens, so you can watch those live and see what's happening inside there as the flowers are coming to bloom. But you can also go on to the zoos page, and they have lots of fun pictures and videos of animals. And they posted this week a scavenger hunt that you can do. Um, the Public Museum has also posted a scavenger hunt, and they have videos from some of the exhibits in the museum. And then the Children's Museum has really fun things you can do every day. So they have videos, and they have, they'll teach you how to make slime. So there's lots of fun things you can learn to do at home, and there's a lot of resources right here in our community, so I encourage you to check those out. But most importantly, I encourage you to stay safe, stay positive, fill up other people's buckets. Right now, more than ever, we need to make sure that we are kind and loving to other people because this is a hard time for a lot of people. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of the Saturday 